When we recorded the last album, I said at the end of that process, I remember vividly saying in an interview, I wouldn't record an album like that the next time. I wanted to move on and do something different. I wanted to explore a few different ideas, sing in a different language, not necessarily English, adding a different texture that way to the record, but also I definitely knew I wanted to tie in the imagery in a different way and have the imagery directly reflect the content. I asked Craig Mackay to do the images because I felt that he would understand the, the narrative of the record and also the story behind it, the idea, the, the feel behind it. And I felt very much that his style would, would work well with the music and the content on the record. I didn't have a specific idea of what the images would be like. It was a bit of a free fall for me because I had given control to Mr Mackay to do what he wanted. Uh, but I did set some parameters. I said there were to be no nudity or dead animals and we, we got away with most of that. <laughs> Although it's me on the album cover, it's not really me. Everyone's always asking me about the feathers. <laughs> What's on your head and why? <laughs> so those beautiful feathers were from a barn owl found at the side of the road. And I loved the idea that Craig had to reimagine them as something beautiful and otherworldly in the form of a headdress. And of course the birds are very much a connection to the other world, a creature of the night and again a connection to that slightly more darker side to the record. This actually connected very well with Heidi Seuss's work in the way that she creates her beautiful designs of clothing. <laughs> Heidi's costume was perfect in so many ways and I love the idea that her pieces are reworked. They're scraps of older material, vintage pieces, second hand, and she works up these beautiful garments out of that. It reminds me a little bit of the songs of going back and reusing what you have and the jacket itself has a great connection to the owl, the barn owl feathers because of the, the feathering work on the shoulder. She actually made them, I believe, with plastic milk bottles. She cut them and treated them in such a way that when you glance at them they look for all the world like real feathers until you touch them and then they're actually something else. Myself and Craig, we put the jacket together with, a, with an old wedding dress from Texas and uh, I went around Broda like that for a day. <laughs> it started life really as an exploration of the songs from the other world, the Gaelic other world. Um, so songs of legend and lore and mystique and those great stories which have so much to tell us about our own history. And whilst I was doing research for that, I came across this quote from Pliny the Elder which translated from Latin into English as they call it the other world. It made me really think about how the Gaelic language, which has been spoken for over a thousand years in this land, and these songs, which are several hundred years old, can sound so exotic and so otherworldly in the very place that they belong. I don't like to think of what I'm doing as I'm having any great importance in the grand scheme of things, but what I do feel is the, the songs that I'm singing in the language that I'm lucky enough to use is hugely important and it's a great privilege to, to take that to stages all over the world. When we're out touring, we're performing to audiences, you know, 99% of them will not have Gaelic. I don't see that as a bad thing, you know, I don't think you have to dumb music down, I think Audiences are very capable of connecting to music and being moved by music. But the visual gives it another dimension entirely. And to me, it brings the song alive in a different way. It was about creating something that lets audiences without Gaelic, it lets them in. I can be describing these songs and describing these places and I have a visual 
running through my head all the time. And by doing the film, that gave a little bit of that visual in a very creative way. It goes without question, I mean, it was imperative for me that the, the song be set in the Highland landscape. As the theme and the style of the visual approach became clearer, it became apparent to me that this, this one particular song was the one that we should shoot. Which is um, a really intriguing song and one that I love very much. It's quite interesting because the, the, the main character in this is the, a creature called the Erhushke, or the water horse, who is this creature of the other world and who is often portrayed in songs as the terror. Then there's a victim, usually a woman, who is taken away by him. Um, but in this song, things are turned around and he's the victim. He has had a love affair with a mortal woman. She's born him a child and she's left them and he can't care for the child and he's begging her to come back. And I like that contrast in, the, of, in terms of the characters and the sense of loss from this allegedly terrifying creature's point of view. We try to portray that sense of loss in the film by the feeling of, of loneliness and otherworldliness. And of course the great star of the film, which is Rue the dog. It was freezing. It was freezing. But the shots of it afterwards, they're pretty awesome. On the album I'm surrounded by lots of my greatest musical friends and of course mainly my, my husband and main collaborator Eamon Dourley and we met playing music. He's got a great ear for, for songs and what will work with our band lineup. We get to work with great musicians, great friends, Tony Byrne, Duncan Chisholm and longtime collaborators like Mike McGoldrick, Ewan Vernal and Donald Shaw. Um, but as well as that on this record I also invited Mary Chapin Carpenter to, to sing with me and we first met on the set of Transatlantic Sessions um, many years ago now. I remember being a teenager and listening to her records and to get to meet her and to get to sing with her was such an honour and we hit it off immediately. I was struck by how interested she was in the Gaelic language and the traditional song and folk song. She loves those stories, she loves getting to the story of the song, the truth of the song and apart from that she loved singing in Gaelic. So when it came to recording I sent her a message and I asked her if she would be willing to sing along on Archie Fisher's song Windward Away um, and I said but also P.S. there's another Gaelic song that if you fancied singing uh, you know, you'd know, you be welcome to sing on that too, I'd love it if you could and she emailed straight back and she said, I'd love to do um, Archie's song, I'm such a big fan of his work, but please, 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 can I do the Gaelic one too? It's a beautiful foreword. She's not a Gaelic speaker, but she feels a closeness to the language and almost an understanding of the language. She says when she hears the singing, she feels like she's home. As Ali described it, having Gaelic in your bones and in your being and having a sense of it and a feel of it and understanding it almost, but yet not being able to speak it, not being able to communicate it. And that is something that resonates with so many Highlanders and Scots Islanders. Um, so many of us have this very deep-rooted often family connection with a language that goes back a thousand years in this land but has been in decline for so long. So many of us have lost that ability to communicate and communicate as well as we'd like to in the language. And um, there's great 
there's great loss in that and it's a very deep sense of loss and it's kind of hard to describe sometimes but I felt that Ali summed up perfectly in her foreword. These songs are part of the fabric of the landscape, they're part of our history and the, I have this ongoing obsession with songs and landscape and how they're connected and how when communities are connected to both the songs and the landscape that they're all the richer because of it. When those elements have a disconnect you've, you've lost something so so special. For me, it's definitely about celebrating one's own culture and standing up for that and being proud of it, sharing that with a wider world, but also reaching out to others too, because the older I get and the more I get to tour and collaborate with other musicians, um, it sounds very simple, but it's it's very powerful idea that we actually all are singing the same kind of songs. We all are singing about the same things. We. The same things move us. Oh.